Before you click ahead in this video, we need to talk about the number one problem in 2v2. Here's what the 2's ladder looks like when you only include healers. Notice any trends? Disc priests, preservation evokers, they're everywhere. But why is this a problem? Well, it means that double DPS comps are virtually extinct. Good luck going through two pain suppressions, rapture, dome, and life swap, all while getting blasted by penance. Instead, virtually everyone's best comp will be with a healer. But don't be sad, fellow 2v2 enjoyer, because your success in the 2's bracket isn't limited to a tier list. The truth is that everyone can find success in 2v2. Hey, get out of here. And to reach your goals, you just need one thing. Huge f***ing damage. Damage is a really big deal in PvP, and we know from data that being able to deal more damage is directly tied to rating gains. Skillcap.com is the only place that promises you will gain 400 rating or your money back. That is a huge promise, but we promise we can deliver. Why? Because we worked with these guys, BlizzCon champions, and players with stupid amounts of rank 1 titles. Using their knowledge, we created brand new courses that instantly get you ahead of the competition, teaching you how to deal rank 1 level damage and healing for every spec. We even offer a complete UI package for every skill cap member, which gives you the best UI for PvP in just a matter of seconds. Our add-on profiles were custom made to win you games, reducing clutter and isolating key information so you can play just like the pros. So to get started with the best guides and the number one UI for PvP, check out the exclusive discount links below. Back to the video. Right now, there is one spec that really stands out in 2v2. Let's dive in. Feral Druid is definitely the king of the jungle in the 2's bracket, having the perfect combination of damage, control, and defense. Unsurprisingly, the best 2v2 comp for Feral is playing with the Disc Priest, since they continue to have great synergy. I mean, come on, this is one of the most iconic combos in PvP history. Anyway, Feral Druids are kinda like sub-rogues in disguise, pinning down multiple targets at once and truly enabling their partner to free cast damage, which is exactly what Disc Priests want to be doing all game. With the best of the best out of the way, let's move down to discuss our A-tier DPS. Our first A-tier is Survival Hunter, but as a quick disclaimer, this spec might not be the best at lower ratings. Sure, Big Mex can make it work every season, but he plays thousands of games one-tricking a spec in a bracket that drives most players insane. Don't worry, Big Mex, we still love you. Anyway, your best bet is playing with one of the meta healers or even a resto druid since all three will give you amazing CC synergy with either fear, sleepwalk, or cyclone to follow up on freezing traps. Survival is one of those specs in 2v2 that can do a ton of consistent damage and benefits greatly from carrying momentum with swaps in between the DPS and healer, which is why having some offensive support really helps. After taking a few damage nerfs, Unholy has fallen down our ranking slightly, but it is still highly competitive. Historically, Unholy DKs tend to fall slightly behind in the bracket since they lack the finishing power to close out games, but now that there are a bunch of viable offensive healers, things have changed. DKs can do actual setups, playing off their 45 second pop, lining up a bunch of cooldowns at once in order to cleave targets down. Throw a Disc Priest, Prez Evoker, or Resto Shaman into the mix and you have a deadly mix of damage. Our next A tier DPS include both warrior specs, with arms potentially making a comeback, especially after Fury suffered back-to-back -back nerfs in the past few weeks. Anyway, you already know that warriors have been a staple in the 2v2 bracket since the dawn of time. Right now, they're pretty solid for most players across all rankings, but might struggle against some of the other S tier specs, and can even struggle into Devastation Evokers, but more on that later. Coincidentally, Warriors are one of the few DPS who don't really mesh well with a Disc Priest, and a Preservation of Ochre, Resto Shaman, or even a Resto Druid might feel a lot better for most players. Next up is Sub Rogue, which we almost placed on the S tier, but held back since it is yet another spec that falls off at lower ratings. But just like Feral, Sub plays off the strength of its control, doing routine 3 2 1 setups in order to gradually burn through enemy CDs one by one until the perfect kill window opens. Naturally, a Disc Priest or Preservation Evoker is going to be the perfect partner since they provide huge burst damage to 100 0 people in stuns. And even better, these two healers have the high value Fear DR that sub rogues can play around, using Psychic Scream or Sleepwalk to create massive CC chains with stuns, gouges, or even saps. Another oddity of sub is that these days it actually does some pretty consistent damage with Rupture of all things, allowing it to even out damage other high tier melee on the scoreboard. Assassination Rogue is another high tier threat and is a bit more friendly to play compared to sub for most players. Asa is still an attrition based spec, relying more on maximizing overall DPS over the course of a longer game. Its main strength in other brackets is that it massively benefits from AoE cleave, stacking a huge damage multiplier with Scent of Blood while spreading AoE dots which makes it really good into unholy DKs and BM hunters. 
Ideally, you're going to be playing with a healer who can help pile on the damage too, as many of your wins will come in deep dampening. The main problem with Asa right now is the prevalence of evokers, who have no problem denying Deathmark with a simple cauterizing flame trade. Having your 2 minute CD shut down by a cooldown with double the efficiency just doesn't feel good, and for that reason, survival hunters can be a bit annoying too, due to mending bandage. Speaking of which, Devastation has shot its way up in the 2v2 Medicine's last expansion, quickly becoming a bully for any poor melee in the bracket. Devastation can be absolutely brutal to deal with, since Hover is also a freedom effect, and not only do they have two charges, but each charge is even reset every time Deep Breath is used. They're basically mages in male armor. Their damage is nothing to scoff at either, and Devastation Evokers work best with any of the big damn healers who are able to assist with kills during Deep Breath setups, blasting down some poor player who just wanted to cap conquest for the week. Speaking of blasting with damage, Windwalker Monks are still a great choice in 2v2. Over the years, Windwalker has evolved from its early roots as a calculated tactician into something closer to a brawler, kind of like a fury warrior who decided to cosplay in some leather armor or something. Anyway, Windwalker Monk does a surprising amount of consistent damage, though can lack the finishing power that players might remember from the past. You're still going to want to do big bangs with leg sweep setups, which are twice as scary whenever you throw a big damage healer into the mix. Next up, we have our two remaining Hunter specs who conveniently share the best comps. BM continues to be a staple in 2v2 and is one of those specs that is absolutely brutal to deal with in deep dampening. Just ask any Disc Priest and they will tell you about the raw fear of being hunted down by Zoo Tycoon once dampening reaches 40%. Marks is a bit of an oddball in 2v2. Although it torments the solo shuffle bracket, 2v2 is a completely different ball game, and without a reliable lockdown effect for DPS, Marks hunters can get bullied a bit by any high tier melee, especially if they have disarm ready for every true shot air horn. With every high tier out of the way, let's drop down to the mid tiers, where there are still some heavy hitters. Up next is Outlaw Rogue, which is another spec that could actually be a tier higher, but is held back by the fact that it needs an Adderall prescription in order to play. Right now, Outlaw is the least beginner friendly rogue spec and is even a tier weaker overall, which makes it a bit less appealing to play. In order to maximize your potential, look to pair with any of the meta healers or look to dampen with a resto druid. Next up on the B tier is Demon Hunter. Historically, DH was one of those specs that always did well in 2v2 since it had super high consistent damage. Despite some recent buffs, Demon Hunter still seems to be falling behind some of the high tiers. Some of its previous synergistic talents that buffed its teammates' magic damage were nerfed going into the War Within, which means needing to rely primarily on offensive healers once again. We definitely could see Demon Hunter move up every tier list after some more buffs, but for now, they'll fall on the B tier. Frost Mage might seem like a weird pick for a 2v2, considering we said double DPS is dead and mages generally like to be buddy-buddy with rogues, but right now the spec is actually quite strong when paired with a Disc Priest. The main problem with any caster in 2v2 is that it's very easy to get shut down by some of the high tier melee. Good luck trying to get away from a Feral Druid or Sub Rogue with infinite mobility. Because of this, if you're queuing 2v2, you definitely want to be playing with the Snowdrift PvP talent, giving you some brief moments to unload on damage with your Priest friend. Then, get ready to go back to kiting and avoiding as much damage as you can until you have another go ready. Continuing with the trend of casters, we have Shadow Priest making its way to the B tier, but this is one spec where you definitely need to be on top of your game. One big problem with SP in 2v2 is that it's a bit weird to play with one of the best healers in the bracket. Shadow Priest has some of the best damage in the game when it can actually cast, which means needing another spec to help with lockdown and kiting. Resto Druid can fit this description quite well since it can act as a mini sub rogue for you, maiming one target while you do your stun silence combo, but you could also play with an Evoker, Resto Shaman, or even a Holy Paladin. Again, this spec does take a bit of finesse to pull off in the bracket, but can feel very rewarding. The only other wizards to appear on the mid tiers are all warlocks, who are all quite solid in 2v2 after recent armor buffs. Demo might actually have the lead now, as it is the only caster with a strong and reliable MS effect. Because of this, your win condition isn't going to be winning the game with setups, but instead making sure the enemy healer has exactly zero mana once dampening ramps high. With all specs, we're going to recommend either a Preservation Evoker or Resto Shaman to help you offensively, or even a Resto Druid if you're feeling spicy. Our last remaining mid-tier is Rhett Paladin, which might seem completely out of touch, but let us explain. Rhett Paladins can actually put up some pretty big numbers on the scoreboard, but unfortunately lack just a tiny bit of kill power. A lot of their damage is baked into some of their new hero talents, which can make it hard to score kills. That is, of course, if you aren't playing with the Disc Priest or Preservation Evokers, who have just the right amount of damage assistance to cover your key weakness. With our mid-tiers finished, it's time to wrap things up with our unfortunate low-tier specs. 
First up is Frost DK. Of course, this spec can feel a bit restricted in other brackets since it has one of the most linear win conditions in the game. You do big AoE damage in one go, and then you run around for the next 45 seconds until you can do it again. 2v2 gives you a bit more flexibility and control in your ability to do these setups, but you're still going to get out-tempoed in between your goes. And to make your setups as deadly as possible, you definitely will want a preservation of ochre with you in order to AoE stun with deep breath and a pressing roar. Next up on the mid-tiers, we have both Enhancement and Elemental Shaman. Overall, these specs are just a bit too slow for the bracket, lacking the true finishing power to close out games. Despite getting some recent damage buffs, Enhance can't really keep up with any of the high-tier melee. While it might have the ability to bully casters from time to time, you can expect most games to be relatively drawn out, which won't fare well for your self-healing. 2v2 is not exactly the best bracket for shamans. Remember when we said that the nice thing about playing Frost Mage is that you can kind of set up for yourself? Well, with Deep Freeze being pruned for over a decade, it's easy to see why Arcane and Fire have fallen off a bit in 2v2. Historically, Fire Mages could avoid this problem, finding success in 2v2 when playing with a Sub Rogue who has Deep Freeze on a zero second cooldown. But remember, we're living in a Disc Priest world right now, which definitely complicates things. As Fire, you can definitely try playing with a Rogue these days, but it might be a bit of an uphill battle the moment you queue into any of the meta healers. And as far as Arcane goes, get ready to dampen with either a Disc Priest or Resto Druid. Last up on the C tier is Balance Druid, which is a spec that has always felt a bit clunky in the bracket. The TLDR is you basically have no way of winning the game outside of Incarn and Root Beam, which means you really need to be playing with a healer who can provide a mix of damage and lockdown. Resto Shaman and Preservation of Ochre fit this description, but most games will be an uphill battle no matter what. That brings us to our DPS tier list for 2v2, and in just a moment, we're going to break down the healer meta. While it didn't make it into our complete breakdown, we would advise against augmentation in 2v2 as you're bound to have some very long and frustrating games. But now let's quickly break down the healer meta in 2v2. Of course, we spent a lot of time talking about Disc Priests and Preservation of Ochres. Hands down, these are the best healers. But we think there's at least a place for every healer in 2v2. Druid, Shaman, and Holy Priest are definitely up there as well since they all offer a mix of control and damage. And by the way, for every comp that works with Disc Priest, Holy will work too. It might be a bit harder, but there is enough overlap in the toolkit to make the transition. Mistweaver Monk is probably the worst healer in the bracket, and your best bet is to play with any high tier melee DPS. If you're wanting to get started and rank up fast on any of the classes we covered today, check out our brand new website at skillcap.com. Our guides are designed to get you ahead by teaching fundamentals that actually carry in Arena. We've even leveled up our revolutionary add-on, which with the click of a button can give you the number one UI for PvP in just a matter of seconds. So to get started with everything you need in the new expansion, be sure to check out the exclusive offer below and learn how you can gain 400 rating risk-free. For now though, that's going to be it for us. See you soon and good luck in the new season.